It is a brand new edition of Hockey and Hounds presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. It's Jason Martinez, Flyers head coach John Tortorella. As the gauntlet has wrapped up, we got a great dog this week. I can't wait to talk about uh, joining us is John Tortorella. Torts, how are you? I'm very well. Yourself? I'm good. Isn't it weird when a dog's got the first and last name? <laughs> or Luke Wilson, I'm sorry. Wasn't he an actor? <laughs> but he, Behind he, enemy lines? Luke here, the picture of the dog looks like he can fly. So, yeah. Uh, well, we'll get to that shortly, I guess. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the gauntlet first, Torts. Um, it's over. Two wins uh, over Toronto and Boston. Three losses, Toronto, Boston, and Florida. Two overtime losses, the Canes and Rangers. 22 goals for 30 against. You Kind of your assessment at, at that chunk of the schedule, which we obviously made a big deal out of. Maybe the media and myself made too big a deal out of it. Not, not really. A very important part of our schedule. I, I as, we, as we got into the meat of it, I, I, I'm really liking the way we're playing. Uh, we give up. 13 to 14 chances last night. We gave up 12 the game before. We gave up 10 uh, the prior game. Uh, I, I think we're playing the right way. Um, we just got to now you go through that type of schedule with that type of power we played against. Now we just have to keep our concentration to play the game the same way as we're playing against teams that are just not up in the standards that those teams were. So um, that's our battle now. And so we'll we'll fly out of here, get to Montreal, and uh, get back at it. How do you attack that? Do you attack that just head on, uh, that human nature element? Okay, you faced all these top teams, and now you're facing teams that are not ticketed for the postseason. Do, do you ignore it and just do things business as usual, or do you just take that head on towards you know, I, 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 a little bit of both. I, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I, 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 because I, I think sometimes you can insult your team uh, when, when you're when you're really stating the obvious. And and that's one thing about our club that I've loved this year is how the room handles itself and uh, how it holds itself accountable. Uh, I'm not going to insult them. They they know where we are in the year. Uh, I think we're full of confidence. Uh, uh, we battle back and battle back, and we, we just keep on playing. I, I think we're in the right mindset. We just got to keep playing games. Torch, you look at some of your young guys through this gauntlet, and, and I look at guys like Owen Tippett and Morgan Frost and Cam York and the sacrifice to their game, uh, the, the not taking a shift off. Is there mistakes? Absolutely. But guys not afraid to make plays against the best teams in the league with all to play for here. Some guys have probably r really shown well for you, young guys in particular. Yeah, we have a ton of them in, in our lineup. There's a ton of young guys getting uh, big minutes, and not just Yorkie, uh, but I mean Forrest and you know Frosty has kind of taken over uh, a little bit of that number one center role, and uh, Paling has done great things. You know, Paling looks like an old man to me, but he's still very young. Um, right. Yeah. I don't mean, I don't mean to insult. That's not an insult. And you and I are both old men. So, uh, but he, we forget about how young he is in, in crucial times, crucial minutes, checking roles, uh, uh, tip stepping up and scoring a big goal last night. Uh, this is all good. Uh, I'm a little frustrated this morning. I, I, I do think we should have got a better result last night. Uh, um, had some breakdowns, some pucks are going in our net, uh, uh, but we kept on playing. So we get a huge point, and we just got to keep our wits about ourselves and keep our confidence. I think that's a huge thing: is is don't uh, don't test the water, don't back off, feel good about yourself, and they should because they played really well. It does those games kind of like that Ranger game? Do they drive you crazy a little bit as a coach? Because you have a really tight game. You guys are protecting the middle of the ice incredibly well, not giving them anything inside. And then a third period comes along. You know, you're leading two one, and this game just turns into a back and forth trade and chances type game. And it, it's kind of you didn't see it coming. Uh, and as a coach, you feel like maybe you lose a little control of the game at that point as well because it just gets so wide open. Some crazy bounces uh, oh. uh, worked against us. Some crazy bounces. A face-off goal they scored hits Trochek in the head. It comes to uh, Lafreniere, and he scores a goal. There, there were just so many crazy bounces. 
but but I but I I watch how we play when they scored. Uh, you know, when they're up three two, they score a few quick ones in the period. You know, we call a timeout not not to not to berate them, not to tell them what they need to do. They know what they need to do. Uh, it's just to kind of maybe take an extra minute, catch our breath, uh, exhale, and get back to how we were playing. Uh, I think at that time they had 24, 24 shots or so. They ended up with 29 shots for the total of the game. So they had three or four shots the rest of the period. They just happened to go in our net. Um, so I, I really liked the way we responded. Uh, there was no panic. Uh, uh, I didn't say much in the bench, uh, quite honestly, when we were going through it. I was watching it. I kind of enjoyed the game because it, it was an exciting game to play in. And we just kept playing. So it didn't get the result. Uh, uh, we've got to figure out our three on three and four on four. It, it's been a struggle all year long, uh, as far as that. And, uh, uh, we've lost some key points there, but hopefully, uh, uh, we'll find our way there and just keep playing. Torts is the philosophy of three on three for you. When you start with Paling and Cates to win possession, because three on three is so much about possession yeah. that it, it like you see, you've seen a couple occasions where you don't, you never even get it because yeah. it's just so wide open. Is that the philosophy there? And you want to get your guys out after you win possession or get a stop defensively? Yeah, I, 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 I like that. I've led off with him and, you know, it, it hasn't worked. It didn't work last night, but I, he's good on the face-offs. Uh, we don't have the personnel uh, to match up against a, a pretty deep Ranger team and some of the teams we've played here as far as the, the offensive people they have. So one of the groups is going to have to check a couple of their offensive players. And yeah. uh, I, and the thing with Pales and, and Katesy, quite honestly, they've had the, they hold on to the puck really well. Katesy's really come a long way as far as holding on to the puck. We just not have, we just haven't been able to get the puck. Uh, we, we just blow a coverage. I, I, you know, I, I don't understand what Pales is thinking there. It's a simple man on man coverage. Uh, the D who scores the goal is his guy. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a little bit of both. Pales has brought us a lot of offense too and has been very strong in the puck and so has in Casey. Then I, I get some other people to come in behind him. We just haven't been able to extend the overtime long enough. Yeah, to get him out there. Uh, yeah. you, you look at the, the situation and your team's lack of panic in, in a game that gets frenetic like that. Like I look at TK, I mean, you can see he is battling through a lot of pain right now and sacrifice. He takes that block shot and kind of like in the heel area on the one Lafreniere goal. Uh, but there's no panic in his game, and he just seems to continue to rise to the occasion. Is he just kind of adding another notch on his ladder in your eyes? Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, we we give him a letter. He's got an A on his shoulder right now. I, for a I reason. Think he, yeah, yeah, it's for a reason. I think he wants to take his game to another level. I, uh, he knows that we need him. Uh, he's a guy that brings us a ton of offense and a ton of energy uh, within our club. And it's crunch time here now. And uh, I, I think that uh, that brings him to another level. He 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 still, uh, you know. I don't think he's in his prime. I think there's so much more and better hockey in him as he keeps growing. I think he believes that, which is more important, and he knows we need it now. And, and so uh, I, I think he's proud to be a uh, to put a letter on his shirt. I think he's proud of that, and I think he's trying to step up. Torts, uh, you got a couple guys back at practice. Nick Sealer uh, was on the ice. Jamie Drysdale as well. They're on the trip. Um, getting those guys back, I know you're not going to give me a specific timeline, uh, but you know, getting one or both of those guys back would be great. But that being said, you've got two young guys that have not looked overwhelmed at all in Ronnie Adderd and Adam Yinning, willing. There's been mistakes. Yinning kind of got walked a little bit in, in the game in Philadelphia uh, this past weekend against Florida. Uh, but overall, those guys have not looked out of place in any way, shape, or form. Not, not nervous for a second. I'm, I'm proud of Crazy, them. Crazy, right? I am. I, I, yeah, I, I'm proud of them because I, I, you throw them into this situation in the toughest position to play, defense. There's so many different things coming at you. And remember, when they've started with us, they're playing against top five teams in the league. And <laughs> they've seen them night after night. Uh, welcome to the National Hockey League. And uh, – I, I think they've handled themselves very, very well. They, you know, there, there's speed issues at certain times. There's mistakes. The the quickness of the game at this time of year has gotten to them at times. It's to be expected. The, the, what what I like is 
when there is a mistake made and there are mistakes, they go back out and play and, and they're not on their heels and uh, they're not afraid of that mistake. That's what I'm looking at uh, as, as you start developing these guys, especially in the back end. Are they able to handle those type of situations? And uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's been a great experience for our club uh, as far as where we are in the process. Yeah, we want to get in the damn playoffs. Yeah, right, right. We can talk. I never talk about playoffs. So I'm going to talk about playoffs all day long now. We want to get in. Uh, yeah, but there's I'm, so much I'm, to gain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm proud of the team. I'm proud of how they've handled themselves through the trading deadline, all the injuries that that came away, and and we have just stuck together and hung and played as a team. That's the most important thing. It's a group and a uh, uh, really good feeling going on in the locker room. Yeah, whoever puts that jersey on has been part of the group and assimilated. I always talk about when goalies come up to the NHL, I, I say it's the NHL, the most unforgiving league in the world. <laughs> it can yeah. make you look real foolish, real Very fast. humbling. Yes, it's but, very you know, humbling. Yeah, I see guy. Oh, this guy's been great at this level or that level. You get it. Okay, whole different ball game here, boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, unbelievable. Uh, let's get to our dog of the week. We have Luke Wilson, uh, and Luke's a seven-year-old. Uh, he was found as a stray and taken to the city shelter, uh, just arrived to pause last week, as a matter of fact. I got some video here for you. You can see Luke as well, kind of getting after it in the yard. Got a really good lean build. A little boxer looks like in this dog, maybe uh, some greyhound or something in there as well. Real short video, unfortunately, but <laughs> he's got some jump in his step. That's for sure. Good burst. Yeah, he he He's lean, and, and that's what I was kind of asking you off the air. Is it, was he now nutrition? Is he... Yeah, I we don't know his past, right? When you find these strays out there, it, it's I'm always curious when I look at the dog, what what's been going on in their life the past little while, as far as before they were found, and uh, they're, they're they're so resilient. I mean, look at them. And yeah. I gotta, how do you come up with a name, Luke Wilson? How, how does that <laughs> happen? Yeah. Usually, a dog name's kind of cartoonish, right? Like a kid, yeah. like. You get two names, kind of- but you have a first and last name for the dog, right? How do you come up with that? <laughs> that are very normal. It's like a normal person name. Uh, he, stars is- on, he sounds like he stars on Yellowstone or something like that. Luke Wilson. He's like a yeah. cowboy or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he's a very sweet, sensitive boy. And he's also got lots of playful energy. As you can see in the video, uh, despite the being the you know the fact that he's seven years old, uh, he could be a great match for most homes that are able to take things at his pace. Uh, for commands, he already knows sit and stay, and we think he'll be eager to pick up even more. <clears throat> and since Luke was found as a stray, his, the history obviously when you find a stray, you don't have a ton of of background. Uh, but this is an absolutely beautiful dog. Uh, the markings, the face, the eyes. The white stripe going off the the nose right into his head is absolutely beautiful. And I think this is a dog you can take out in the field, especially this time of year, Torts. Give him a little run, throw the ball with him, get the Frisbee out. Yeah. I think he's going to have a blast. Yeah, I, and, and it looks like to me, Jason, I, I don't think he just looks so playful. And they don't know enough about him yet, and I think that's why they want the foster to check him out with other dogs. It doesn't look like he's going to have problems with another animal. He just seems no. so playful. Uh, so that's a good one to look at, uh, at least to start to foster and learn more about him. Uh, and I hope, I hope something he, he's gorgeous. Luke Wilson. <laughs> See, it looks like that's a dog. This time of year, that's a good dog because they, they don't drop the hair all over the house. Yeah. It doesn't shed <laughs> yeah. like my, my white English cream with my, looks like my floor is growing a beard half the time. Um, <laughs> if you're able to foster, uh, Luke Wilson, and give this uh, sweet spunky hunk a uh, place to recover. Uh, give, make sure you check them out and get in touch with the people at Paws. Foster at phillypaws.org. All the adoption info is at the Hockey and Hounds homepage at philadelphiaflyers.com slash hockey and hounds. And there's an upcoming event towards. We just had the, the carnival and you got to meet so many great people and hang out with the dogs all day. But we did the second annual Pours for Paws. That's coming up on Thursday, April 11th. Uh, from 6 to 9 at Positano Coast, which is located at 212 Walnut Street in Old City. And this is open to all animal lovers of 21 years of age and older. And the event features a live DJ silent auction with goodies from local vendors, tasty apps, including vegan options, and an open bar with oh, there you go. wine and cocktails. Yeah, well, you just got your attention. <laughs> <laughs> and tickets and more information can be found at phillypaws.com slash pours. It should be a great event. And 
Luke Wilson. Uh, he was in uh, Blue Streak. That was one of the movies he did with Martin Lawrence and Behind Enemy Lines with Gene Hackman. You're a Gene Hackman guy, right? Is 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 Luke Wilson actually the name of an actor? Yeah, yeah. It, oh, it, God, was in I, don't, those I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember Gene Hackman in Hoosiers, right, Tori? Have you ever had that oh, practice? Oh, yeah, it was a great season? show. I, yeah. I want you to pass the ball four times. How many? Four! <laughs> Their power play in that game against the Rangers had a five pass goal, by the way. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they were there. Yeah, it, it struggled for a little bit, but we found a way to score a goal. Towards it, it, I always say predictability is the advantage of the of a de- team defending. A lack of predictability is the enemy of defending. And on that power play goal, it starts behind the net with Lawton. He chips it to Tyson Forcher, then chips it to Tippett. Nobody's dusting this puck off or chopping it up yeah. either. Then Tippett gets it to Zamula. He moves to the middle. Back across because everybody is in cyclical motion. And then you have paling front door. There's so many decisions to be made. Somebody's bound to screw one of those decisions up. Yeah, and, and, and you know it's it's a great point, Chase. And I think it's one of our our weaknesses on our power play. And I think Rocky's really trying to work through this to allow them get out of the position. You, you do have a setup on a power play. You know, we'll yep. have a right hand shot on the left side for a one timer, left hand shot, and all that. But there has to be some movement. And the way we talk, go just go play hockey. Is an you have an extra man. OK, don't get stuck in your own position and just be creative by moving with it. And we, we give them a foundation of a breakout. I, I think our breakouts have gotten better as far as our entries. Last night we struggled a bit, but I think for the, in, for the most it's gotten better. Then just play hockey in the end zone. And I, I think we get stuck in being too deliberate. Uh, and, and I think it's a little bit of overthinking and just not allowing yourself to play. Yeah, you can't be static because when you're no. static, the other team's going, okay, I got you covered, and I don't need to do anything now. If you're constantly just front in motion. Yeah. Yeah, they just front you and block the shot, and it's down the yep. ice. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to, you know, it, it's been a struggle uh, all year long. I'm not hiding from that. We're going to keep on working at it and hope we can get it more consistent as we keep on pushing. Last thing, uh, on a power play, I've always been a believer that you have to have somebody that grabs it and goes, it's, it's my power play. I own it. And you had a guy here in Giroux that was that for years. You had a guy in Columbus that's with the Rangers now in Panarin. Uh, you get in the zone, you get set up, you get it to me. We start here. Yeah. This is yeah. I. It's my power play. I start it. it. You need to have that guy too. That's kind of the alpha we don't. of the power play. Yeah, yeah. We don't. You need that. Though, we right? don't. Yeah, well, absolutely. And basically, a lot of people think you can, you have to run the power play from the middle of the ice with a defenseman or. It doesn't no. have to be that way. Like Bred uh, Panarin on the Ranger power play, he's on the, he's on the half wall. He's down low. He's going to touch that puck though before anything happens. Yep. And he wants it. I, I don't think we have that. And uh, you know, it, it, I, I think our skill is developing. Our young guys are beginning to develop, but we need that guy that's going to say, "This is my group." And yeah, uh, Yorkie has played better. Uh, I think mm-hmm. he has shown me more. Uh, that, that kid there has shown me so much here and, uh, playing 27, 28 minutes and, uh, more and more, uh, he just, he just keeps on presenting himself. And, uh, but as far as that power play is concerned, we just don't have that guy that takes control. Yeah. And, and Panarin's a guy that will play below the bottom of the circle, which is hell and high oh, water for the yes. D and the goalie. It's just yeah. a really tough position to put a team in. Uh, Torts, best of luck this week. Montreal coming up uh, a Thursday, uh, Saturday, back at Wells Fargo. You get Connor Bedard, and uh, we're down to the final nine games of the season, if you can believe it. This has been another yeah. edition of Hockey and Hounds. Everybody enjoy the week of hockey, and we'll talk to you next week on a brand-new edition of Hockey and Hounds.